Welcome everybody to Startup Grind's event number 12. Uh, we've been going around the island, doing a tour to um, first of all, interview successful people, uh, doing workshop, doing panel discussions. Uh, how many of you is the first time that coming to a Startup Grind event? Not only Cyprus, it's worldwide. Ooh, many, cool. <laughs> so today, as you know, we're gonna talk about uh, cryptos, NFTs, and Web3, and we're going to dumbify it as much as we can. Um, and this is suitable if you're an absolute beginner. And I am confident enough that by the end of this workshop, everybody will leave this room knowing exactly what cryptos, NFTs, and Web3 are. So that's, that's my promise to you. <laughs> so... My name is Hassan Adnani. I'm the chapter director of Startup Grind Cyprus. Uh, we initiated the chapter two years ago uh, when the pandemic happened. We were doing virtual events and then we started doing in-person events. We started doing tours around the island, doing different events in different cities. And um, you can follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and today I'll be your conductor. I'll be teaching you about the basics of cryptocurrency. So, we also have 21 people join virtually as well. So it's not only us here, we've got another 21 people um, watching us as well. So welcome, you have one video that is showing the audience, virtual people, and you can see that um, we're glad that you're here too. So today we're gonna learn about fundamentals of uh, blockchain technology and decentralization. This is very important and if you know this first point about the blockchain technology and decentralization, then the rest of these is just an add-ons on top of the blockchain network. So I want your full attention at the beginning of the presentation, at the beginning of the workshop, and once you get this handled, then the rest is easy. We're gonna talk about the web three and compare it with web one and two. We're gonna talk about cryptocurrency, digital wallets. Um, we're actually gonna set up a digital wallet today for you, we're going to talk about the crypto exchanges, um, how show you how you can buy crypto safely and set you up with a crypto exchange as well. We're going to talk about NFTs um, and we will show you how to buy NFTs as well, all the way up to the point of the purchase. So I'm not going to click on the purchase just until that point. Then we're going to take, talk about a little bit about safety, security, um, and then we're going to talk about investment mindset opportunities and community. So we want you to take the knowledge a bit further and then do your own research later. Please scan this. This is called Slido. Uh, it's gonna take you to slido.com. You can actually go there as well and put that hashtag SGCY. Please people virtually join as well. We're gonna be asked, I'm gonna be putting questions up and we're gonna do an interactive um, let's say Q and A's and interactive, let's say voting. And I'm gonna ask you some questions. So please have this on your mobile phones or your computers or your laptops or whatever you're using right now. And we'll be using, we'll be using it on, on this workshop. So the first question was, how much do you know about crypto NFTs and Web3? And we've got the results. We've got 46% that says, um, I did some research, now 40%, so majority did some research about cryptos, NFTs, and Web3, but um, we've got some people saying I've heard about them, some people know them well, we've got some crypto masters here, I think in the, you're in the wrong place, I'm kidding, <laughs> and there's a 5% that says I don't know anything, perfect, you're going to know everything after. Our sponsors for today is Source Media. You can plan, monetize, scale your business online. They're a marketing agency. Um, it's actually a part of it. So come and find me later if you uh, if you want to plan, monetize, and scale your business online. And also our second sponsor is MetaRings. Again, involved in it. I'm involved in it. It's the NFT jewelry ring collection. So is jewelry links NFTs both on metaverse and in real life. I'm going to talk about it later. We've got partners. Annapolis University obviously gave us the venue, 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 and we're all here. 
Um, we've got JCI Paphos. JCI in general is Junior Chamber International. And what they do is um, basically they help the young citizens in each city to create a better professional infrastructure for that city. So JCI Paphos is supporting us. JCI Larnaca also a part of it. Uh, we're supporting these events. And uh, our last partner is EcoX Cyprus, which they also do um, conferences, events. Check them out. They've got uh, Panis is also is going to join. He's not here, but you'll find Panis later as well. Let's get started. As I said, this section is the most important section of this workshop. If you learn, if you understand this section, the rest of the workshop is a piece of cake, right? We're gonna talk about the fundamentals of blockchain technology and decentralization. Right. I'm gonna talk about blockchain, but I'm gonna do a little play by volunteers. So by the end of this slide, you're definitely gonna know what blockchain technology is. So blockchain, the definition of it, is a digital collection of information about transactions, which has ledgers. So if you break the word down, it will be block and chain. Block, the blocks that are chained together, right? Have that image in your mind when you hear blockchain. And chain meaning connected. The word block means a collection of data, collection of information, collection of meaningful information that is on the blockchain. And the chain is actually um, the blocks interact with each other. So these are blocks of information interacting with each other. And what happens on data on blockchain is unchangeable. Once a data goes on blockchain, it cannot be changed. And everyone can see it. So it's a transparent network of information that everyone can see it, and it cannot be changed. I need one volunteer by raise of hand, and we're going to do a little play of how blockchain technology works. One volunteer. Anybody? Okay. No, it's okay. What's your name? Arian. Arian. Nice, nice to meet you. So, me and Arian, we're friends, right? And uh, we want to exchange some money and keep balances, right? No, 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 this is not into wallets, right? So, on my left hand, I'm going to show your balance of money and on my right hand I'm going to show my balance right and you do the same so the left hand is yours right hand is mine right you've got five euros and I've got two euros right we, we agree on this we agree on this imagine nobody else is watching this is a private conversation right um I will give you I'll take your five no I'll give you I'll take two euros from you right so now you've got three, I've got four, right? These are our balances. Tomorrow I go to sleep, I come back to Aaron. 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 And I tell him, no, your balance is zero. My balance is seven. Right? How can you prove that this is the correct balance if it's only between me? Right? So this was a basic way of when people started transacting with each other, this was a basic agreement between people. Obviously, it didn't work because you know if we both go to someone and say he gave me five euros or I gave him five euros, whatever happens, we can't prove it because it's a 50 50 agreement, right? Okay. Um, sir, what's your name? Manus. 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 All right. We came up with another solution. We said, okay, we're going to have one witness of our balances, right? And have your hands up with the, with the balance. So I've got three and he's got five, right? And uh, he, I give him, uh, I'll take two euros from him. Five and three, right? And Manos is a good friend of mine. I go to his house at night. I say, Manos, I'll give you two euros. You can make this balance even. You need this. Changes that, it makes it zero, it makes it five. I come back tomorrow and I tell it, Arian, we've got zero balance. And the witness is saying, we can't remember. <laughs> what can you do? Five. Nothing, right? So obviously this solution of tracking data doesn't work either. If you have only one witness, you have two witnesses, three witnesses, we can play around with it, right? 
This is called centralization, meaning that everybody within that network relies on a central entity to keep the data, right? Now, I want everybody to put their hands up. Three euros, five euros. I want it. No one except three and five euros. Right. He gives me two. Five, so three. Please, five and three. I come next day. I say you have zero and I have seven. Do I? All of you. There we go. So this is called decentralization. This is how the blockchain works, right? So the records of the data get saved on the blockchain, which is called the ledger. And there are different nodes. Imagine I replace all of you with computers, right? And all of the computers have the same copy of the ledger. They have the same exact copy of the balances of me and him. And once, if we want to do a transaction, then all the nodes, the computers are called nodes. All the nodes needs to first verify. Then I agree. Then change all together at once. And then give us the final results of the, of the states. Right? Thank you, Peter. Uh, I'm not going to steal you. Right. So is that understandable? All right. This is blockchain technology. The blocks keep record of each other. No blocks gets deleted. So if this transaction happened between me and him, the previous transaction is recorded, never gets deleted. The next transaction, like a puzzle, goes after that statement. And if there are other state uh, transactions, it goes one after each other, one after each other, one after each other. And everybody has a record of it. And there are thousands and millions of computers right now in the world which are doing this. <clears throat> Are you confident with blockchain? Is it understandable? All right. So let's exactly show you what we meant. We want to do a transaction on a blockchain technology. Let's say Bitcoin. I want to send someone one Bitcoin. My transaction request is going to get created into a block of information. Like this. this block is going to go to all the other nodes, all the other computers which are witnessing this network, right? And every single node in the network needs to verify this transaction. Or otherwise, it will not happen, right? In return, every node, when they verify, they get rewards. It's called proof of work. So for the work, for the computation power they use, they get a reward as a Bitcoin. This is what crypto mining is. These are these computers verifying transactions in the network. Once it's verified, once the nodes are rewarded, that block will be attached to the rest of the blocks within the uh, blockchain. Then the blockchain will be distributed to all the nodes. So all the nodes will have this new information. The transaction is complete. All good? Perfect. You start the camera? Okay. All right, so let's get into some terminology since that then we know blockchain. Is there anybody that didn't understand blockchain? Okay, so let's go through some terminology. Block, as we say, block of data, collection of data. Node is a, nodes are the computers witnessing and verifying the transactions, how you verified our transaction in a human form. Nodes do the same. Proof of work, proof of stake, and proof of blah, blah, blah. There are other methods of rewarding. Is the rewards that each node gets once they verify the uh, transactions? The network is the entire yeah, blockchain Papa. network. It's the entire blockchain network. We've got Bitcoin network, we've got Ethereum network, it's going to Polygon, and etc. And a public ledger is all blocks of data that we talked about, all the transactions shared with everybody in the network. So everybody knows all the transactions from beginning of the network, day one, day zero, all the way to the current date, right? It's transparency. Someone might ask like, okay, how is this 
you know, how, how do I keep myself private? You know, I don't want people to know how much money I, I, I sent to someone I received. On a public ledger, there's no names, there's only the codes. It's a code of your digital wallet. So there's no identity of you, it's the identity of your digital wallet, which is really your choice to say, this digital wallet is mine, right? So you are fully private if you want to be. And since we're going through terminology and is the nerd within me doing that? <laughs> nerd within me, right? Um, I'm gonna slowly turn you, turn you into my nerd as well. Back to the presentation. Let's talk about decentralization. This is a second word that I want you to pin down and understand fully because this is, this is a big world happening, okay? So since everyone has access to the same ledger, all the transaction happening on the network, and no one person or institution can control it, then blockchain is decentralized. Meaning that this effort that we all just did for my transaction with Aaron, there was no institution behind it. There was no one person, like the first time we did it with him, there's no one person controlling this, right? So it's an effort that we all did together to keep a record and keep integrity of the record, right? So this is what this is what decentralization is. On the blockchain, anybody um, can add to the ledger, uh, but you can't add a transaction to a bank's ledger, bank statement, or perform transaction without the approval of the bank, right? So the system, the money system, the monetary system that we have with the banking system right now is centralized. Because if I want to send Aaron 10 euros, I have to go to my bank, the bank has to approve this transaction and the bank is one entity. Many people working in it, but it's one brand, right? In decentralization, this doesn't happen. This is, um, if you see it on these diagrams, this is a bank, it is all of us working with it. This is decentralization, which is no center in it. There's nobody controlling it, right? You came late, right? You missed the most important part. <laughs> All right, I, I hope you catch the rest. Um, let's go next. So let's do some examples of decentralization, right? A fully, as we said, a fully functional financial system without the banks, right? Land, property, housing man management without the land registry. Crowdfunding without the Kickstarter or GoFundMe. If you heard, uh, if you remember like last month, it was the Canadian truck convoy. You've heard of that, right? And what happened with that is they did a crowdfunding, they did charity crowdfunding for these trucks that they were protesting, and they managed to raise $10 million through GoFundMe. But the last day when the money wanted to be released to the truckers, things got political and GoFundMe said, nope, we're not gonna give it to the truckers, we're gonna give it to our charity of choice. Oh. Right? Yes, of course. Legally, if it's, if it's a matter of national security, boom. So crowdfunding, what the truckers could do, what people did actually after was that they set up digital wallets for the truckers and everybody sent them Bitcoin, right? So we can have universal ID cards without the governments. We can have medical record and permissions without the health institution. We can have social media channels without Facebook and Instagram. We can't be decentralized. So now you see the point why some governments are against this because it's giving control and, you know. <laughs> so Slido, let's go. We've got another question. I'm gonna put it up. Let's go, let's go, let's go. So the last result, majority of people said they had some research about cryptos. Stop and start. The question is, what is the blockchain technologies with the information that I just provided to you? Is it a Lego game? It's a centralized database used by banks or is it a decentralized and public collection of information? It's an ironic question. <laughs> <It's a leg. laughs> 
Right. Back to the presentation. So are we all confident about the first section of the workshop? Mm -hmm. Are we all good? Does blockchain sound alien, alien intent to you? <laughs> Perfect. That's all I want. The rest of the workshop that we're going to talk about is based. So the blockchain technology is a base of everything else. Crypto comes on top. NFTs come on top. Web3 come on top. DAOs and blah, blah, blah. All these beautiful technology coming out is on blockchain technology. And you, you understand why people are passionate about it. No one controls it. It's an effort of the community. Everybody a part of it. Every, no, there's no need for third parties to control this. So in this section, we're going to talk about what is Web3 and what's the difference between Web1 and Web2 and Web3 and all that, right? So we have Web1. Started 1991 as the first stage of the worldwide web revolution and it went up to 2004 and that web you know was read only you would go to a website to get an information to get news to get articles wikipedia is web one base as well yahoo was netscape was msn was right and it was used by consumers of content created by content creators so there were content creators webmasters, back then it was called Net webmasters, who were creating this website and there were people on the other side consuming this data. So that was web one. As it says, read only and decentralized. It was decentralized at the beginning, but then web two happened. This is the second stage of WWW revolution. It started from 2004 and it's up to now, right now. And it is a read and write. So people could share their opinions, they could share their thought and experiences. However, it was centralized. It is centralized still because it is platform control, meaning that in order for me to send a direct message or, 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 or a message to a friend of mine, I have to go to WhatsApp. Centralized. If I want to like my, if I want to post a picture on Instagram, because I feel lonely at home and I want some attention, I have to go Instagram, it's platform control. And all my friends are on Instagram liking my photos, right? So the issue here is data privacy. Obviously for the past several years, we didn't see Facebook being really you know, uh, clean about our data. You know? It's data ownership. We don't have any ownership of our data. We send our photos, we send our information, we send everything. There is censorship. Obviously with COVID, we saw that. Right. If, if you were posting something last year about vaccines, it would be taken down. Right. You so you wouldn't have freedom of choice about talking about things which weren't politically correct. Right. There's data loss. What if Facebook goes down it's tomorrow? Where is your data loss? Data integrity, um, etc. There's so many of them. Right. So this is Web through with, with Web two with Facebook. All your files are, files are on Google Drive, it's Twitter, your messaging apps, your browsers, Amazon, all the servers, everything is centralized. It worked. Don't get me wrong, we needed this. It worked. We needed some companies to build up the technology, but then us humans were greedy, right? When we take some power, we want more and more and more. So this caused the problem. So we moved to Web3. The third stage of WWW revolution, which is from now, we're very early stage right now until whenever it is. And the beauty of it is read, write, own, and execute, right? It is a decentralized and secure internet, right? Exchange of data without the need of a middleman or a big, big tech is using, and what is using? Is using blockchain technology, right? But it has a double-edged sword. It is a double-edged sword because you know you have much more freedom of speech, all the freedom of speech for versus anyone publish anything. Anyone can publish anything. They can be rude to you and no one can take it down. They can put nudity. Yes. How do you address the last issue? This I'll tell you now. I have I have an idea. There's nothing of it yet, but I have an idea. So Anyone can post anything and everybody can see it, right? But then think about pornography, right? And you don't want your kids to see nude picture of people online, right? 
you've got the technology here, but it's your choice to censor your kid. It's your choice to hide it. So there will be some softwares coming out soon, or most probably they might have came out, but I'm not aware, that will sit in the middle of the Web3 decentralized internet and your computer. So you set up a software that filters what displays on your screen. What is your choice? You can take it out anytime, right? But if you live in North Korea, which is a massively centralized system, right? It's not your choice. There's some website that you cannot access. It's illegal to access. Then what's the difference? It's your choice to put the filter, not anybody else. So if you have a kid, you download that application. What if this filter is attached to the table? No, that can be. It is a software based. Right? Obviously, countries can filter from your internet providers, which you've got bigger issues than the technology, right? But in the European Union's structure, I don't think that happens. GDPR and privacy and all that. Um, but again, you have to know, it's your choice. Us humans, we have, we have a freedom of choice. We decide what's good for us, right? We don't need protection. Right, so when Web 2 to Web 3 transition happened, instead of these apps on the left, you're going to have these apps on the right, which are decentralized. No one owns them, right? They're all on the blockchain. So the programmers, they made these apps, but once they publish it on the blockchain, they have no control of their, app, their application, or if they have, is within their tokenomics. That's what it's called, is within, so it's public. Everybody knows what application is doing what. There's no secret behind these moves. So we've got, let's say, these browsers that some people might know, right? Browser. Our messaging system status is one coming up. YouTube is, might be replaced by life here. Um, Dropbox and uh, Google Drive. We already have very strong companies working on this. I'll give you an example of SIA. Okay, Sia, they created this project which you can take your computer storage and put it available on the blockchain, right? And the system will use your storage or anybody that participates within the blockchain to save and store files. But it's, it's bits and pieces of files. So if I save a photo on their network, 10% of my photo is in his computer, 10% is that computer, 50% this computer. So individual computers, they don't have access to my data, but the blockchain, if I want my photo, will put these pieces back from the computers and show it back to me. Nobody owns it. Nobody has control over it. Nobody can change it. Once you put the photo, it's there. Slido, let's, let's go for the, the other question. All right, so we've got worried. Really? Worried about the technology? Who's worried? As a I, blockchain. Why are you worried? Because once you put the data somewhere, you never know when you can get them back again. Let's say you might only play what I think. Or if they're going to be transferred anywhere that I may Both of them won't happen. One, nothing gets removed from blockchain, okay? Second, you said you might get transferred somewhere else. No one can change the blockchain, only you can. So once you send your data to the network, the only person that can access that data is you because you have a key. I'll get into it later. You have a key to access that. The data is always there. It never gets deleted, okay? And you can only transfer it to another form or another thing. Is your permission? Yeah. So what happens to all the, uh, I mean, not all here forever. So, you know, we go and put all this information, and sometimes it's very important information. Right. That only we have access to. Mm -hmm. So, how how does anybody else say, if my kids, if something should happen to me? I'll, show, I'll tell you. It's, it's basically uh, your digital wallet has a key. Right. So, if, it, if anyone has it, it's not you. You have to understand on blockchain, it's not individuals. <laughs> is the digital wallet, is the key. So whomever that holds the key has the ownership. So if I have 100 Bitcoins right now, 
And by mistake, I have the key here. It happened to a lot of people, right? If I store the key in my USB drive, and then he takes the USB drive, it's his Bitcoins now. Finish. Unless if he's a nice guy, like how we talk to him. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> to give it back to me. But once the key is gone, it's gone. Is, is, is a phrase. I'll show, I'll, I'll, we have it, okay? It is, it, is, it is worrying sometimes because we are used to centralized organizations protecting us, right? So I don't know if something happens with the transaction, you can call your bank and say, this happened, that happened. But at the same time, we got lazy, like as individuals, like we get scammed, but because we know that we're gonna take our money back from PayPal, you don't pay attention. But if you know that on blockchain, once your money is gone, then every transaction comes with an attention, right? There's ups and downs. So in other words, excited, innovative, strange, cool, excite, exited, amazing, revolutionary, nice, love it. Right, so that was Web3. This is decentralized and secure internet, which things happen on blockchain. So what are cryptocurrencies? Obviously, cryptocurrency is built on, a, on blockchain. Because as I said, if you learn the first part of this workshop, the blockchain, everything else is on it. So cryptocurrency is decentralized digital money on blockchain given as rewards. Okay, so remember I told you about the nodes that verify the transactions. These nodes get rewarded by Bitcoin if it's a Bitcoin network, right? So that's the only way Bitcoin can be created, as far as that's it. Um, and then what happened was that people started mining these Bitcoins. They started verifying this transaction, getting the rewards. And then us humans as a community, we decided to put a value on Bitcoin. We said, okay, Bitcoin is now $10, right? So now these people that got these Bitcoins from mining, they went on marketplaces public marketplaces and they started selling their Bitcoin, meaning sending their Bitcoin to someone taking $10, right? And this is how we have Bitcoins and it's getting generated again and again and again by transaction verifying. But at one point it will stop. And I think it's like 50 years, I think or 40 years, I'm not sure. That the system will not give out any more Bitcoins. So when that happens, all the Bitcoins is like, there's no money being printed anymore, it's done and just people have to transact between each other. So uh, decentralized, cryptocurrency is decentralized, obviously no central entity uh, controlling it. Um, cryptocurrency only exists on computers. So there's no notes, obviously. It's peer-to-peer, -peer, P2P, is passed from one person to another person online. That's how we transact with each other. It's pseudo pseudon pseudonymous, meaning that no personal information is required to own and use cryptocurrency. All you have to do is to own a digital wallet, which to get a digital wallet, you don't need to put your even name. You don't need to do any of that. You just take a wallet and that's it. And it's encrypted, meaning that your cryptocurrency can only be accessed by a special code, which is called hash, or also they call it private key, right? This is what we wanted to get to. And it's nearly impossible to hack. This is one of the most secure technologies we ever created as humans. It's impossible because there are millions of computers around the world and they all have to verify at the same time. So there's no, there's no hacking happening because if one computer gets hacked, all the other computers will correct that computer. All the data will be wiped and then a copy of that data will go back to that computer, correct itself back to the network, right? And um, the only way that can, that we are hacked is if the whole world goes out of power at one time, which if that happens, we have bigger problems than cryptocurrency and Bitcoins and Ethereum's. <laughs> so how do we get crypto, right? Let's get into some more practical stuff. There are three ways to get crypto now. Right? One way, as we said, is the reward. So if you do crypto mining, you will get reward. Let's say if you buy a crypto miner, a computer, put it into a network, the computer works on the network, verify these transactions, 
then you get Bitcoin or whatever network that you participated, you will get the coins as a reward, right? This is how it's created. Um, it's also called proof of work, proof of stake, and proof of ETC. There are proof of coverage, proof of whatever. Let's say the storage example we did is a proof of storage. Is how much data you prove you put proof of transaction. I think I'm not sure the word, but it's how much data you store on your computer. With that portion, you get reward, right? So proof of work is the electricity, is the computer that verifies this transaction. Obviously, it uses electricity to do that. Proof of stake, other technologies, you can search about it. I'm not going to get into it. Second way to get crypto is if it's sent from one wallet to another. So what was your name again? Manos. Manos. If Manos, you know, got you know, if I want to send Manos the, the, the under the table money from that transaction, right? I will take his digital wallet address. There's a public address. I'll take his public address and I will send two Bitcoins or whatever to Manos in his digital wallet. And the third way is to buy and receive it from a cryptocurrency exchange with your fiat money. You know what fiat money is? It's the money we use now, right? So there are some big companies called exchanges, which they own a lot of Bitcoin, Ethereum, and all these coins, and they put it for sales. They're like, okay, give us 100 euros worth of whatever. They will take your money and automatically send the Bitcoin or Ethereum or whatever coin that you purchased to your wallet, right? These are the three ways you can get cryptocurrency. And in order to hold your deep cryptocurrency, you need to have a digital wallet, right? Let's get more into it. So what are some of the cryptocurrencies? There's a website, it's called coinmarketcap.com. This is, this is your Bible for cryptocurrencies, right? Almost every cryptocurrency and token and coin is listed on that website with its price, with its price history, with the circulation, with the market cap, everything. All the data that you need with the website of the authors, with the networks and everything, every data, everything you need to know about a specific coin or token is listed there, coin market cap. The three top most popular ones, obviously is Bitcoin. It was one of the first that came out, I think the first that came out, which if you think about it in our current financial systems is equivalent of gold. It has no use, it's just store of value. You own gold, you can't do anything. You can make rings and stuff out, but still gold. But it's just store of value, right? You've got Ethereum, the second most popular, which is like digital petrol. It's, it has utility. So on Ethereum network, blockchain network, you can add applications. You can add use cases. You can add other tokens. You can create your own token and bring it on the Ethereum blockchain, right? So Ethereum gives you this ability to create smart contracts, which we're going to talk later. I just have that word in mind. You can put smart contracts on Ethereum and USDT and USDC, they're stable coins. And we're going to talk about that, I think, next slide. And this is the top 10 right here. Bitcoin, Ethereum, Tether, BNB, USD, C, Solana, XRP, Cardano, Terra Luna, and an Avalanche. These are the top 10 blockchain network out there network and coins and tokens. Terminology about cryptocurrency. So gas, what is gas? Gas is the transaction fee you pay to a blockchain. So if I want to send Manos one Bitcoin, I have to pay some gas to the network. I have to pay transaction fee to the network. And where does this transaction fees go? Back to the miners, circulates, right? It's uh, right now in Ethereum, gas prices are very high. We're fixing it, but in other uh, network, gases are low. So in other network, you should be expecting every transaction to be like one, two, three dollars per transaction. But right now in Ethereum, because it's high demand network, you might be even paying like $50 for, for a gas per transaction, right? Even if you want, if I want to send him one dollar, I have to pay $50 gas to send him one dollar is the transaction fee, but the Ethereum 2.0 is fixing it. Coin is the native cryptocurrency of any 
network blockchain bitcoin bitcoin is a network and the coin of the network is bitcoin ethereum is a blockchain bitcoin is ethereum token however is a cryptocurrency that doesn't doesn't have its own blockchain and it operates on other blockchains as i said ethereum is a blockchain ethereum is a coin where you can create your custom tokens on top of ethereum which uses the blockchain but it has its own value it has its own uh price it has its own usages right this is what token is it's like you know when you go to the playgrounds you give your money and you take some chips and tokens. It's like that, right? You can't use it anywhere else except from that place. That's what token is. Stable coin is a cryptocurrency whose price is one-to-one -to, -one to a fiat currency and it is pegged to a stable reserve asset. So what it is is one USDC is equal $1. This is a stable coin. We've got Euro T. One Euro T is equal one Euro. Always, it never changes. This is a stable coin. And the way they do it is they reserve some money within a fund and they give out exactly the same number amount that they have in the fund into tokens. So if they have $1,000 in that fund, there are 1,000 uh, coins, stable coins given out. This is very useful because once you, have, once you get into, let's say if you bought Bitcoin years and years ago and you made a lot of profit, right? And you want to take your profit now. One way is obviously to bring it back to fiat, to take it to a bank account. But if you want to keep it on the blockchain network and don't deal with banks or deal with transactions and all that, you can just change it to stable coins and the price will exactly be $1, right? And do whatever you want after. Smart contracts, as we said, is an algorithm on the blockchain designed to ex execute a certain transaction based, based on a set of a pre-established parameters. So it's like a contract. If I make a contract with him and I say, he's not a good contract with me. Uh, if I do a contract with you, okay? And I say, I give you $2 for your shirt. And we agree, right? So we set parameters, $5, shirt i give you the five dollars you give me the shirt and it's done the contract is finished and we go we go home smart contract is these kind of contracts on the blockchain and it happens the beauty of it it happens automatically i give you an example real life example let's say um like you, you sending somebody else but let's say if me and you are partnering okay we're partnering into a project and your job is to bring bricks into the project to get paid. And my job is to take your bricks and build a house, right? We create a smart contract and then it will be connected to both of our digital wallets. Once the contract is executed, if I take, keep the end of my deal and build a house, it will automatically go back to the contract. Blockchain network, right? So, Obviously, there's a way to verify if the house is built, which will be somehow I'm not a, house, a real estate expert. But once the conditions are met, yeah, maybe that's part of the contract as well, where it states uh, A, B, and C have to be satisfied to prove that the contract. Has yeah. Been so it's the current smart con there are companies. Okay, the projects that come out of come like they get built on blockchain technology. They kind of innovate these problems. This, this is an issue. Like, how can you verify a real estate building being built, right? There will be a company doing a project that uses the smart contract of the blockchain. So we will see more companies coming out doing these kind of projects. That's why there's a massive opportunity right now because there's a lot of gaps. There's a new technology, not much happening. Uh, sorry, a lot happening, but not much available apps available yet. It's like when the iPhone came out. Back in 2009, there was no apps on it. So if someone made a calculator app on it, they would make a lot of money because there was not enough available. Now you make a calculator app, it doesn't work. So I give you an example for a smart contract because this is really important. And this is for you to think about blockchain and how you can use opportunities, right? So let's say if I'm an investment fund and I create a smart contract for all of you as investors to invest in my investment fund. Okay, 
in a smart contract, it says, I will take your money, I will invest on these blockchain projects, which are automated. And once the profit comes, it will be distributed to all of you as an investment. We set this on a smart contract. You bring your coins inside the smart contract, but I don't have access to that. I only have access to the digital wallet. I invest it. The digital wallet will get the profits, but I do not even see the profit because the profit goes straight to the smart contract, gets distributed to everybody, and the job is done. So I don't have any control as an investment fund of the profit share. Right? We're good with smart contracts. Mm -hmm. And since we're going through terminology, I'm turning you into nerds. Nerds. It's hiding it behind there, but that's what was two thousand seven. Seven. How dare you populate the misinformation in my class? <laughs> yes. What if you still want to go over the coin chain token and which one? Coin. The coin. The coin and make the cryptocurrency of a blockchain. Yes. So is is the rewards the computers get? Native is the rewards that the nodes get verifying transaction on the blockchain. Right. So okay. Ethereum. Ethereum token or whatever is a token. No, Ethereum is a coin. But let's say what's on Ethereum? Um, what project? Tether is on Ethereum. Okay, Tether is a token right. because it's built on Ethereum, right? Oh, no, no, no. Let's go next. Slido, the question is, what cryptos have you heard of except Bitcoin and Ethereum? Let me bring the question up. Deutschcoin and Shiba Inu. Ah, oh, you're into shit coins. <laughs> That's what it's called, by the way. It's a shit coin. Uh, well, now Deutschcoin came out and said we're going to make our own metaverse. Deutsch. Um, we've got after Cardano is losing his popularity, but it's still a very good coin. We've got USDC, Sol Solana, very good for NFTs. Terra Luna, if whomever invested in Terra Luna last year would be is a millionaire now. Is their massive, massive growth. What is a digital wallet and how to set up a digital wallet? We're getting more practical as we speak. So Obviously, a crypto digital wallet stores your crypto private key, okay? It's not a wallet, it's not, the coins doesn't come to the wallet. Don't confuse that, right? It, all digital wallet does is saves a key. That's all it does, right? So you've got your private key, your private key will be stored in your digital wallet. And once you wanna do, when you wanna do transactions, the digital wallet provides the private key to do transactions. Remember on blockchain, the records are on blockchain. So if I have two Bitcoins, I don't have two Bitcoins in my wallet. I have a record of two Bitcoins on the blockchain. And for me to have the ownership of those two, of to be able to change that and transfer it to other things, I need a private key. That private key is your is stores stored in your digital wallet, right? And yeah, it keeps your crypto safe and accessible. Uh, it allows you to send and receive and spend cryptocurrency using that hash code. And as I said, the private key hash is ownership proof of the digital money um, on blockchain. Within each blockchain, you will have a different key. Like each Ethereum, you will have a key. Bitcoin, you will have a key, right? And there are three types of wallets. There's paper wallets. Literally, you can take your code, write it on a piece of paper, Put it on a safe, and that's your paper wallet, right? It's doable. Like it's very safe as well, unless there's fire now. And um, there's a hardware wallet. It looks like a USB. Um, there's not a hardware wallet, but it looks like that, a bit longer. And um, your your private key is stored within that wallet. But the most popular is a third party online, also called online wallet, which your private key is stored with a trusted app. Have you heard of MetaMask? MetaMask. Mm -hmm. Have you heard of Coinbase Exchange? Yeah. Within Coinbase Exchange, there is a wallet. So your wallet, so these companies keep your keys as much as it sounds scary, but it, it works 
pretty well as well. So in this session, we're going to talk about third party wallets and I'm going to show you how to set up a third party wallet using MetaMask. So the most popular crypto wallet is called MetaMask and the website is metamask.io. And um, you can have the wallet on your internet browser and also there is a mobile app that uh, acts as your wallet. When you register for MetaMask, as we're going to go through, there will be a seed phrase which you will never, ever, ever share with anybody and your private key within the wallet. You will never, ever, ever share with anybody. Nobody needs that from you. Nobody should ask it. So if somebody comes and says, oh, for this transaction, I need your private key, is a scam. It doesn't need your private key. It needs your public key, public address. Okay? So it's only for your own eyes. And you can share your wallet address, that's what it's called, wallet address, publicly to send, receive, and execute things on a blockchain. So every wallet has a private key and a public address. If I want to send, receive, if I want him to send me one Bitcoin, I will send the public address, right? But for me to send him a Bitcoin to authorize the transaction, I will use my private key to do that. That is not related to blockchain. API key is, it's, I will, I will tell you so, uh, later. It, it, doesn't, it, doesn't have, it doesn't do anything, it's, right? Is application protocol interface oh, no. programming? How many tech guys are you? How many programs? There we go. So I heard it, okay. Fair enough. <laughs> so, are you ready to set up your digital wallet? As many wallets as you want. Within your wallet, you can several you can have several accounts as well. So you can have several digital wallets within one. Now, now install for Edge. Yet. It's, it's nothing to learn. I will show you everything you need to know. There's not much happening. Yeah, I mean, like, you want to set up separate wallets. Say I want to make uh, something of a investment for kids. And yeah, I will show you too. So if you install it, there will be an icon up here. You see, uh, I can't really, I don't want to change the screen resolution. It will mess everything up. But you will see this icon, this Fox icon on your browser, right? And when you click on it, if it's your first time, it will take you through registering an account with them. So we'll take you here, it says get started. We'll ask you for two options. It says new to MetaMask, no and yes. So obviously if you have other wallets made before, you can import your wallet right here, but you can create your wallet from scratch. And it will ask you to agree some stuff. Um, and it has X's, the stuff that I said, never collect keys, addresses, transaction balances, hashes, or anything they never collected. Um, they never collect your full IP address and they never sell your data for profit. But I heard something that um, the majority of the MetaMask shares are owned by JP Morgan. <laughs> So password, not good at all. Zoom in. Oh yes. Oh no. So actually zoom in I was gonna put dummy password. Uh, well, obviously pick a good password. I'm gonna put test, test, big test, one two three. Test. Password don't match. Agree, create. Watch this video. It's about securing your wallet. So that's on your own time. 
But then here where you have to be very, very careful. So secret recovery phrase, also known as seed phrase, right? Is this phrase right here. Tip sort in a flat moment, blah, 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 right? You have to write this. My recommendation is write this on a piece of paper, fold it and keep it somewhere safe. You will not use it. This is only for recovery. If you use, I don't know, if your computer gets slow then or whatever, you want to get your wallet back. This is the phrase. It's the only way that you can get your wallet back. So write this phrase down with the spaces. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 12 words. This is your seed phrase only for you. Yes. Within the, yes. I think every account has no, no, only, the first. only the first. Okay. So you can only recover your first account, but you can use your private key anyway, export yes, private yes, key. Yes, yes, but for this, I, like, if you have one digital wallet and if you can create several accounts yeah. within that digital wallet, it recovers them the primary account of that one. So yeah. The others, you have to keep the yeah. private key yeah. separately for each account. Yeah, I know. Once, let me copy this. Next, it will ask you to put it so that you know it's tip, sort, image, flat, Moment, nominee, need. There we go. We confirm it. That's all it is. You have your MetaMask wallet, and it looks like something like this. Okay, this is your MetaMask wallet. If I close this, and if I, as I said, if I click on this icon here that has a fox um, thingy, it will open up on the side of my browser like that. The seed phrase? I don't think so. No, I'm not sure. So no. this is your wallet. It will show you how your balance is. What if somebody saw it? You shouldn't read. Yeah, you can. I, I don't think. Can we? Can you change it? No, it's once and once and that's it. From that, yeah, there's no way. Yeah. So please don't do, don't register in front of other people and save it on a paper and put it somewhere. So it looks like that. This is your wallet. If you click on the three dot, you can actually expand it into a bigger view, which I'm going to do for to to show you. That's how it looks like. You will have your assets. You can import tokens from coin market cap. I'll show you that as well as an extra. You will have the balances. And what's important here is this up here. You see this? It's called account one. And when you go on top of it, it says copy to clipboard. This is your public address. Okay? See so this, you use it to send and receive cryptocurrency. Right? So if I copy it, if I paste it, it's a big phrase like that. It's a public address. It usually starts with zero X. Okay. So if you give this public address to a wallet address to someone, but you misspell one character, you will never receive the money. Right. Or if you take someone's wallet address and misspell it, you will never send him and your tokens are gone forever as well. So you gotta be very, very careful with this phrase, double, triple check it every time you wanna do transaction that is to the correct wallet, okay? And here is to buy, I don't recommend buying on MetaMask, but let's say if I wanna send my Ethereum, which I have none, to someone, you will ask me, what is the public address it starts with zero X? Okay, so you put the public address here, you will send it to that wallet. Sometimes there's a QR code as well that you can scan. You can use that as well. And that's how you send cryptocurrency to another wallet. And if you want to receive cryptocurrency, just send your public account number and they will send it to you. It's like a bank account number, right? Any transaction you do on Ethereum or any blockchain, you will pay the gas. 
It's some networks, the gas is very low, maybe a couple of cents, but that the current Ethereum network is very high. So please avoid, this is a mistake I did and I lost a few hundred euros just for gas, no more than that, for gas fees. Don't make unnecessary transactions. Try to merge, try to merge all your, all your plans into one transaction. Yeah, check one, uh, merge all your transactions into one transaction, send once. The best time to send transactions is Thursday, 3 p.m. The gas prices is the lowest and Sunday, 10 a.m. These are the price, Cypress time, um, cheapest gas, right? All right, so this is MetaMask and also up here, there are different networks. We're on, we're on Ethereum mainnet network. If you work with Avalanche, you can switch to Avalanche. There's some, as I remember, tokens sit on other, on other blockchain, whatever. Avalanche is a different network. Bitcoin is a different network. Can we have, I don't think we have Bitcoin on MetaMask. No, you can't have Bitcoin on MetaMask, but you, know, you can switch networks. The way to the best way to import tokens into your MetaMask is to go to coinmarketcap.com. Okay, the website that I told you at the beginning of our uh, session. And it looks something like this. Okay, with all the tokens here. Let's say if I want to import tether, tether into my MetaMask, I just click on that coin. It will show me everything about Tether. The price is a stable coin, as I said, the website. And if you see, it says contracts, all right? Over here is contracts. It is on an Ethereum network. And there's this Fox icon. And if you press on that, it will add it to your MetaMask. It will open up MetaMask and it will add Tether to MetaMask. And if I go back to MetaMask, Okay, if someone sends you Tether and if you don't have it imported, you will not see your balance. It doesn't mean that you lost the coins, it's just you don't see it. You have to import the coins to see the balance, how much Tether you have. You good with MetaMask? Cool. Do you now have a crypto digital wallet? Either you had it from before, you had it, you just did it now, or let's go to the question, let me bring it up. So not, not all of you were beginners, you lied to me. 52 <laughs> percent 56 going up had dig digital wallets from before okay perfect we'll let that go yes what is a cryptocurrency exchange how to buy cryptos let's do it cryptocurrency exchange it allows buying cryptos with fiat money as i said with your paper money he allows selling cryptos in your fiat money so let's say if you made profit of two thousand euros on Bitcoin, you can go to exchange, send them your Bitcoin or whatever, and they will send you to your bank account. So these exchanges connect with your credit card, connect with your current bank account so that you can use it. Okay, also, you can, within the exchanges, you can exchange tokens to tokens without fiat, right? So there are your gateway from your fiat currency to your cryptocurrency. This is how you connect the two worlds. And uh, within the crypto exchange, you also have another digital wallet. Right? So your MetaMask is one side. If you have Coinbase or whatever, which I'm going to show you, it's another side. So it's connecting the world. Three popular exchanges, Binance, Coinbase, Crypto.com. These are the three that uh, you can use. They're free to use. Sorry? Crack. Not a big fan of them. But these are the, more, these are the most three popular. There's also KuCoin as well. KuCoin. Um, yeah. So the Binance and Crypto.com, they will give you a credit card, but Coinbase doesn't. However, Coinbase is easier to get KYC. They don't even need a KYC. So you can open up and uh, yeah, know your client. So you don't need to submit that many applications for Coinbase. It's easier to open. You all need now? I don't think so. Right. So what you do, you go to Coinbase.com. looks something like that. You press on get started up here. 
you will ask for your first name and last name, right? So you go through this wizard, you register normally, and you will also can download the app on your phone, uh, any phone. We just open this up. So if I go to my coin base, Usually I don't keep cryptos in Coinbase. It's just for me to buy and transfer back, right? So if I go to my Coinbase, once you register, this is how it looks like. It's gonna load up now. Right, there we go. So this is how it looks like. All you should be caring about is the two buttons on the top right. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit so you can see. That's how it looks like. There are two buttons up there called buy slash sell, send slash receive. So buy and sell. You click on it, a pop-up comes up. And then most probably by the time that you register, you have your card connected as well. So you can say, I wanna buy 100 euros of Bitcoin and I'm gonna pay with my TransferWise credit card, which I, which the one I use. I click preview buy and you get your, coin, you, you get your uh, Bitcoin in matter of minutes. Sometimes it has some delays, don't worry, it will come to your account, right? or you can sell it or you can convert it. So I can say, I wanna convert my Bitcoin to my USDC. And then you convert it right away. If I close the, you can see your balances and all of your coins and assets are here, right? And as we said, everything is recorded. So if you, let's say I use a lot of Avalanche, AVAX for my, for my investments, all the transaction that I've done so far is recorded on blockchain and it will stay there forever. So I can come and find it. So this avalanche, we've got a tab up here called wallet. I click it, it will show me everything I've done so far. Why is everybody quiet? They wanna see what I've done. <gasps> yes. So all, everything is recorded from, for the block, uh, on the blockchain and this data is not on Coinbase, as we said, because it's decentralized. This data is on the blockchain network. So all Coinbase does, because it has my public address, it will go to the blockchain and it will request all the transactions for this address. And uh, because it's public and anyone can see it, they will display it to you. So if you really think about it, no, Coinbase doesn't own this data. They just use the network to get the data, right? Are we good with exchanges? Question on Slido, are you going to buy crypto within the next 48 hours? Let's bring that up. So answers are yes, I'm not sure yet. No, cryptos are BS, I'm out. And I'm just here for the giveaway. Ah, there will be a giveaway at the end of the presentation. So stay till the end. <laughs> what, there was a slide on it. I don't know where the slide went. There we go. It was right beginning of the presentation. There will be a giveaway to say until the end of the workshop. All right, so what of NFTs and what makes NFTs successful? Well, we hear the NFTs out there a lot, right? The Fortnite.com, yeah. So NFTs stand for non-fungible tokens, right? Who, who knows what fungible means? No. <laughs> So definitely not many bankers here because all the bankers know what financial is and financial, whatever. So fungible is something that you can replace with something of the same value. Meaning that if I have a 10 euro note in my hand and if he has a 10 euro note in his hand, right? If we exchange his notes, no, it doesn't matter because it's a, it's a different piece of banknote but the value is the same. So banknotes are fungible. Or you can even take a 10 euro banknote and change it for two five euro ones and still have the same value, right? So this is what fungible is. But well, NFTs stand for non-fungible tokens. So non-fungible means unique and non-exchangeable, right? It can, it's, there's only one of the kind in the world. It's like Mona Lisa, right? Mona Lisa was one of the kind. There's no other painting that can replace Mona Lisa. So Mona Lisa is non-fungible, right? And as we know it, tokens 
or the cryptocurrencies that operates on another blockchain. So non-fungible tokens is a token, which is the token is one of the kind, is the only unique token of it, right? So NFT is a token that holds meaningful metadata that is one of its kind. It can hold an image, it can hold a video, it can hold the music or whatever, all right? But the beauty of it is this, it's one of the kind. So if you own one of these crypto punks or one of the board ape clubs from the last slide, okay, it's one of its kind. There's no other picture like that, and there's no other token like that on the on the on the network. So ownership of an NFT is verified what via blockchain, obviously is on the blockchain, by a crypto digital wallet. So the token is owned by a digital wallet, and the token is one of the kind. Right? NFTs has become collectible digital assets that hold value just like physical arts, right? Just like collectible sport cards that people collect, coins that people collect, stamps that people collect, okay? Because it's one of its kind. How are their values determined? Uh, we're gonna go after. Um, the most popular blockchain network for NFTs is Ethereum, obviously, but Polygon and Solana and other networks are gaining popularity. So most of the NFTs are on Ethereum. All right, so let's, let's take some example uses of an NFT, right? You can have art pieces and collections, like how we all know with the pictures and everything. You can have a concert and event ticket with an NFT because every ticket number has a code, right? It's a serial number on the ticket. So it makes the ticket non-fungible. So you can have a ticket as an NFT on a, on a network. In-game digital assets, Maybe you're playing uh, Minecraft and you make a sword and that sword is unique. You can actually make it into an NFT and sell it, right? Fashion and wearables. Let's say if you buy, a, if you buy a mask, let's say, right? You can actually have an NFT given to you when you buy this mask, right? And it stays on the blockchain and it proves your ownership. Virtual land on metaverse, so you can have virtual land on sandbox or whatever on NFTs. Digital identity card, you can have your ID, your government ID on NFT, right? Because again, it's non-fungible. Membership cards and real world assets. So there is, a, there is a connection between the real world and the digital world on the blockchain. Let's say if I buy a very, very expensive handbag, right? I can get an NFT when I buy the handbag from the company that I'm buying it from. So the NFT is kind of equivalent of the bag, but it shows the history of all the owners of the bag on that NFT, right? Earth is not fungible. There's only one of the kind. So let's take care of it. What makes NFT successful? Is the answer to the gentleman here. Um, yeah. <laughs> so there are several factors about an NFT that makes it successful and it gives it value, right? So the first one is underlying values, the value behind the creator. Why Mona Lisa has the value? Because it was created by the artist. The artist is special, so the art is special, art is value. It has potential value, right? Maybe Picasso, when he started it back in the time, right? No one knew him, some people knew him, and they saw the potential in him. So they bought his paintings way back in when he came out. And once he got popular, all of the painting that people held from the beginning now has much more value. So there's a future value prediction. There is utility. When you hold, it's like a membership card. When you have a gym membership with that card, you can access the gym. So that card has a utility to access the gym. And if this happens, Board Yacht Ape Club, the monkeys, the apes that you saw at the first slide, right? They're not just pictures that they're sending, they're acts with these NFTs, whomever has these NFTs, they have access to these private yacht club parties, which all the famous people that now have the NFTs will be there. So that's why one BAYC Board Yacht, yacht, yacht Club NFT now is worth what? 1 million, 500,000 euros, one picture of an ape. If you really think about it, it's your access. It gives you access to Snoop Dogg. It gives you ask access to uh, whomever that owns it. Who will, a lot of uh, celebrities own that, okay? So that's the utility. 
buyer perception is how much NFT worth to you as a buyer. So if you buy an NFT, if you like the art, it has your own value. Similar market values, other NFTs that are similar to this will match their value with your, your NFT. Ownership history, because it's on blockchain, all the owners of that NFT is recorded on the blockchain never gets deleted. So if an NFT was owned by, I don't know, Barack Obama, right? And now you have it, you can sell it to someone else and says, this was the NFT that was owned by Barack Obama in 19, in 19, in 2020, right? And it has a value because scarcity, maybe they made some NFT within a collection and it, it finishes. There's no more NFTs, there's only 1,000 NFT and that's it. And once it's run out, the price goes higher because there's a scarcity of that and the community. Like who are the people supporting these projects, right? How many members do they have? Let's say if you buy from this collection and if you wanna sell it, are there enough people within the community that purchases your NFT later on? So these gives NFTs values. Are we okay with NFTs? Like the meaning, the use and all that? No, it can be videos, it can be text, it can be poems, it can be audio. I give you a use case. Let's say if I'm a singer, right? And today I tell you everybody that I'm gonna sing and all of you know I'm a good singer, right? I can turn my music into NFTs and sell it to you. All of you buy the music and you can hold this. You have the ownership of the song because it's the record of your digital wallet, right? And then 10 years ahead, I get very popular. And all of you that bought my NFTs and supported me today and still supported me to keep the NFTs and not sell it on the market, then you will 10X, 20X your uh, initial investment. Maybe you bought my song for 100 euros and in 10 years time, it's, it's worth 100K, 200K because it was one of my first songs. It's a collectible. So terminology, minting is the creation of NFTs out of nothing. So the first time someone creates an NFT, it's called minting. Airdrop is when an NFT or crypto um, is automatically sent to your wallet for free. So someone has your wallet, someone paid for the gas, and you wake up one day and you have an NFT in your wallet. That's an airdrop. It happens, they use it for marketing tools. Flipping is buying and selling an NFT quickly to make profit. You know that everybody's buying selling right now. You buy one for 100 euros, you sell it for 150. You buy 150, you sell it for 200, you make $100 like that. So you flip the NFT, right? Floor price is the cheapest NFT within a collection. So the floor price is the cheapest Picasso's painting available in market. So that's the floor price of Picasso's paintings. Royalty. What you can do with NFTs is that me as a creator of the NFT, I can say, whenever this F NFT gets tra traded, I will take 5% of it. And listen to this beauty. If I'm, if I'm an artist, and if I make a good art and I support my community, and my community starts selling to each other, I take 5% of every transaction that happens with that NFT. In another way, that means that the whole community is supporting it. So everybody's making money and the creator that created these NFTs are making money at the same time. That's a good example of smart Yes. Whenever a sale is consumed, yes. 5% transfer to Actually, NFTs are smart contracts. Yeah. yeah. Whitelist is a special list that gains early access to an NFT drop before the general public. So obviously um, this, let me go back. This NFT that you saw here, is one of the NFTs from the Meta Rings collection that is our sponsor, right? And is our NFT. What we do is we say, before we go public to sell these NFTs, we'll make a whitelist. And this whitelist, people in the whitelist will have a chance to buy the NFT one hour before the public sale, sometimes with a cheaper price, right? So in one hour, you can make money like that. Yeah. Terminology, and obviously there is a nerd Give coming up. Yes. Yes. Yeah. 
there is, there is, I saw one month ago, one NFT clothing show. So what they're doing is they're creating cartoon characters and you can buy these cartoon characters. And what they do, they're gonna to go to Disney, they're gonna to go to Disney Plus, all these cartoon making, animation making, Pixar or whatever. And they're selling these characters to be used in cartoons, right? And obviously if Disney buys your character and use it in a cartoon, they have to pay royalty, right? But the royalty comes through the smart contracts and goes distributed to the owner of the NFT. So they're doing like 2000 cartoon characters and you're buying it for like 100 euros. If your cartoons character is selected for Disney, then part of that deal comes to you as well. This is the beauty of blockchain. There's no middleman, right? This is why it's so promising and we will see many, many more things coming up. So obviously the NFTs are on the blockchain, but there are secondary marketplaces we can, which you can trade the NFTs, right? These are the three most popular marketplaces, OpenSea, Rarible, and Magic Eden. There are a bunch of them as well. This is the most popular. These you might, might some people might argue that other marketplaces are more popular, but these are the, my take of it. But OpenSea is the most popular. You will go on OpenSea, you will see all these NFTs, you will see the price, you will buy the NFTs with Ethereum or Polygon, blah, blah, blah. And the marketplace will send the NFT to your digital wallet. How to buy an NFT in the marketplace? Let's do that quickly as well. Um, OpenSea.io, OpenSea.io, okay? So this is a secondary marketplace which you can see other people's collections, other artists' collections and NFTs. You can explore through them and buy. Also, you can take your own NFT and sell here as well on the marketplace, right? So if you know what the collection is, you can search it, but you can just go down to what's out there. Let's say these are the top collections. Obviously, we've got the Board of Yacht Club going fifth. Ooh, Azuki took it. So they were first, now they're fifth, okay? And if you go through the collection, let's say if I go to Board of Yacht Club, which is one of the most popular ones, you will see there are 10,000 items. So there are 10,000 NFTs within these collections. There are 6,400 owners. Some owners own multiple NFTs. The four floor price of this NFT, meaning that the cheapest NFT you can find in this collection is 105 Ethereum. One Ethereum is 3,400. So that's around $320,000. The cheapest you can buy. Equivalent of a house. And this is all the, all the volume that was traded so far, right? And if you scroll down, you will have, by the way, the website, you have the Discord channel of the project, you have the Instagram of the project to check it out. If you scroll down, these are the NFTs, right? And today we feel like buying one of the board eight yacht clubs because we have the money. Let's do it. <laughs> okay, so I opened one of them. This is the NFT number 7941. Some of, sometimes this number also shows a rarity. The current price is 105, which is around $320,000. And all I want to do is buy it. So I click buy now. By the way, if I scroll down, I will see all the offers out there. These are all recorded on blockchain, okay? And these are all the transactions of this four day yacht club from this wallet to this wallet, from this wallet to this wallet. So these are all recorded on the network, as we said, it's a blockchain network. So now OpenSea that we're on right now doesn't own any of this data. It's just displaying it to you. The data is on blockchain. So if I wanna buy this, I can either make an offer, which I doubt they're gonna accept my offer, or I can click buy now. It will ask you which, what, with what wallet you wanna buy. I will say MetaMask. It will open up my MetaMask on the right side. Remember on the browser, or it might open up on your phone. Um, okay. There we go. If I click buy now. Okay. No. 
Are you gonna give? You can give that to me. For... <laughs> so we will ask you. This is that. This is that. Click. Obviously, I don't have the funds, but once I click here, pop up will open, and it will ask for your permission to proceed with the transaction. And once you proceed, that's it. There's no going back. So be careful with these moves, and always make sure that you check the URL. So check that you're on OpenSea.io, right? When you're doing big transactions, right? Or the Yacht Club, obviously, CryptoPunks were the one of the first collections NFT. And the beauty of it, CryptoPunks, they actually people minted it for free back in the time. So they were getting free CryptoPunks. They were only paying for the gas. And now one CryptoPunk is worth one million something dollars. Yeah. CryptoPunks, Azuki, Doodles. And we have Invisible Friends, We Friends. World of Women, yeah. The beauty of World of Women is that they they actually support women movement by buying NFTs. So behind NFTs, as I said, there are utilities and you could buy NFT with your own preference. So if you connect with that collection, if you connect with that movement, then buying an NFT is just supporting the collection, if you think about it. And if the collection succeeds, you make money out of it. All right, so safety and security of when it comes to crypto is we're gonna go, there's no more demos, so we're gonna go through this quick. Keep yourself safe. Never share your private key or seed phrase, as we said, with anyone and don't store them on your computer and phone. Write it on a piece of paper, put it into a safe. Use strong password, mixture of words, letter, capital, lowercase, whatever. Some softwares, allow you to use two-factor authentication like Coinbase does, use it. Be aware of a giveaway scam. This is one from Elon Musk, but Elon Musk is two M's, right? So it's a fake account. So on the fake account, it says, um, hint, it wasn't. I'm giving away 5,000 Ethereum uh, to com <laughs> commemorate the launch, Ethereum address. Right? To participate, just send 0 0.3 to 2 Ethereum to this address above, and we will send it back to your address. If you're late, your Ether will be sent back. And then, same geniuses, they wrote the comment, oh, I'm having a blast. Right? Sent, receive, sent, receive, lol. Right? So they will give you an address, they will tell you, send you something to receive something, you send the Ethereum, and bye bye, your Ethereum is gone. That's a giveaway scam. Phishing scams. Phishing scam is when someone tried to display themselves like someone else. What happened to her in her case? Maybe an address is very similar. They will mimic the website, create exactly a copy of that website. And then as soon as you, you like send your ETH or give your private key and that's it, you're, 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 you're gone. So please check the URLs all the time and check the accounts as well. Elon Musk, why is it double M? Elon Musk would never put the, his family name with double M's, something fishy. And it's obviously, it's too good to be true. Just lose, use your logic. Who's gonna give you Ethereum for free? Avoid mobile digital wallets. As I said, yes, you can put MetaMask on your phone, but if you lose your phone, other people have access to your MetaMask, right? You can put a passcode or whatever, but you use your phone in a university connection, in a coffee shop connection, in whatever connection is maybe the connections are insecure. If you use that and then they jump in and take over, right? Avoid that. Create a separate digital wallet for long-term investments. So if you're planning to invest 5,000, 6,000, 10,000 euros into an asset, create a separate wallet, put it there and don't use that wallet for anything else. Just for that investment, you can make unlimited number of wallets. Keep that wallet for that investment and only use trusted exchanges and DEX, essential exchange. So use Coinbase, use Binance. Use, there are dodgy, you know, exchanges. 
if you are owning more than 5,000 euros worth of assets in crypto, then you should look into advanced security as well, right? So invest into a hardware wallet like Ledger Nano X. You can see the picture there is like a USB thumb, it's like a thumb drive, which every time you wanna do a transaction, you have to press a button, right? So it connects to your MetaMask, but when you approve something on MetaMask, you also have to press it on the hardware wallet to, um, to, to proceed. And you can just keep the wallet, the keys, everything are inside that thumb drive. You put it somewhere safe and no one can access anything from you if, you, if they don't have the device in your finger, right? Use VPN when you're moving big assets, virtual private network. Use a separate laptop dedicated to your crypto and NFT investment. Again, if you have 10,000 euros worth of assets, buy a laptop for 500 euros and only use that laptop for, with that wallet for those transactions, right? And when you're done with it, close the laptop, put it somewhere else. So you, you don't get viruses, you don't get uh, Trojans and stuff in it, right? And don't show off your assets. Don't go out there and say, oh, I've got a board yet cut 300,000 because that attracts um, people to scam you and steal from you. And the most important part, do your own research. I'm right here telling you stuff. Don't listen to me. Listen to me. Don't listen to me, right? Do your own research. D-Y-O-R. This, this is the short form people use on Twitter and stuff. Do your own research. Use your logic. Is it too good to be true? Is this reliable? Is this, does this make sense? Do your research. And I made a Slido question. Are you going to do your research before investing? Because this is very important. Last chapter, crypto investment mindset opportunities and communities, right? Crypto investment mindset, never invest in the get rich quick scheme. There's nothing there, nobody has this figured out. There's no program, not even for cryptos, for anything else in your life, never, get sold on a get rich quick project, okay? If it's too good to be true, there's something behind it. HODL, hold on to your dear life, meaning make long-term investments. If you're a beginner in crypto, do long-term investments. Don't hold a coin for one, one month and then quickly sell it for something else. Look into the project, study it, believe in the project, buy something you're gonna hold for, for a year or two years until the project grows. Because when you HODL, then you 10x, 20x. Don't rush, right? Be patient with cryptos. There's one mentality with crypto because we're very early stage. In whatever project you believe in, if you invest in, the project will always go up. Most of the credible project, crypto project, will always go up. However, in a short term, it spikes. Ukraine and Russia's war, it dumped crypto market, a lot of people got scared and they start selling their stuff. And look at now, back to, back to glory again. It's going up again. So all those people that sold their stuff out of fear, short-term mindset, they lost a lot of money. Keep it. Goes down. You believe that Bitcoin is going to stay and grow up to 100000 You believe that Ethereum is not going to stay $3,000 forever, right? It will be more in two years, three years. So hold it. Invest in projects that you understand and you like. So when you study the project, let's say if you're a lawyer, invest in tokens which are related to the legal industry. If you're an artist, go for NFTs. If you are, I don't know, if you are a marine, uh, I don't know, uh, shipping, whatever, invest in project that is related to that and you like it, okay? Always check the team behind the projects. It's very important because if the team leaves the project, the project goes to shit, right? So the team is very important. Are they capable of delivering what they promised, right? Check Twitter. Um, you can search. You can take the symbols of any coin, put a dollar sign next to it, search on Twitter, and it will tell, it will show all the conversation about that token or a coin on Twitter. So if you want to invest in some projects you don't know, put it on Twitter and see what people talk about it. Like, are they talking good? Are they talking bad? Check coin market cap as we showed it before. 
read the project's white paper and talk tokenomics and within the tokenomics it explains the smart contracts and how they deal with stuff and what they're going to do their roadmap and project timeline and everything is in the white paper every project will provide their white paper to you so read the white paper and ask for, uh, crypto professionals for advice and just hodl and relax and hodl actually the word <laughs> Funny enough, he was on Reddit, I think. Someone wanted to roll, write, I'm holding my coins. And he misspelled it and he said, I'm hodling my coins. And the community picked that up on Reddit. That's what Reddit does. And then they turned that into a word and now is actually on Investopedia. <laughs> right. But they said, no, 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 it's hold on your dear life. But the root of it was a misspelling. Crypto opportunities. Twitter is the place for cryptos and finding opportunities. Go on to Twitter, search um, crypto gems, crypto, uh, cryptos that's gonna grow. Search on Twitter, they've got a really nice algorithm that will give you ideas of new projects. Take the name of the projects, do your research and see what happens. Get into cryptos and NFT projects, whitelist, buy assets at a discount before the public sales. Why this I said cheaper and then sell them for more expensive. Find the trustable. These are strategies, but I'm telling you, it's very personal. So you find your own way of investment. Find a trustable community and find opportunities. There are communities that talk about crypto and someone in the community finds a new crypto, shares it with the community. You go research it and you find gems out of that. Use the top 100 crypto projects on coin market cap. So on coin market cap, you have all the 100 projects. Right, use them for the less risky investment for more long term risk, less risky. Right, and then use the top 200 and 300 projects, which are building up, they're still early ages, they're still naive projects. Use them as a more risky project to 20x, 30x on a top 10, top 100 uh, coins. You might do 5x, 6x, right, but on a 200 and three top 300 and the smaller the project is there's much more value on the future if the project is good that's why it's like investing in startups you know a startup is promising they deliver and then you know from the apple stocks back in the 90s it goes like people become millionaires because it's 100 x's right and then act and think like an investor protect your principle and principle is your initial investment always protect that initial investment right when you invested on some something risky, your first priority is to get your initial investment back. So you take the risk off the table, right? And then whatever happens to the project, your money is here. And then you just keep the profit to work for you. So think like an investor, read some investment books, normal investment books to get the mentality about crypto investments. Crypto communities, the most popular one is called Discord. I'm not gonna show you because we're way over time. Um, go to discord.com, download. It's very, who knows what Slack is here? Slack? Yeah. It's very similar to Slack, right? So it's similar to WhatsApp groups as well, but you have different channels within the community, right? All, almost all crypto and NFT projects, they have Discord channels. So download Discord and then get into these projects, Discord channels, and everybody in that Discord channel talk about that project. So get to know them, talk to the founders of the projects, talk to other community members and follow your interested project on Twitter and also follow your interested NFT project on Instagram because there are communities on there as well. This, I'm not gonna do it, we don't have time, but it's very simple. Just download and do that. And let's close. What will our decentralized future look like? Government influence fiat currency will turn into independent crypto coins. Security, stocks, shares, bonds, assets will turn into crypto tokens. Banking, loan, credit system will turn into decentralized finance. It's also called DeFi, D-E-F-I, right? And no one owns the DeFi. You can, right now you can get loans from crypto with DeFi programs works as a bank, but no one owns it. Legal entities and companies will transform into decentralized autonomous organizations or DAOs. This 
people that want to do more research look into this so many opportunities if who, who's a lawyer here anyone lawyer well we're not i'm not attracting lawyers Jesus. who is uh, into compliance regulatories <laughs> accountants <laughs> all right if you find a way to uh, regulate this contact me there's a lot of money to be made title deeds ids membership will turn in tickets will turn into nfts centralized wealth meaning that companies or big corps with few investors on top will turn into decentralized and dis distributed wealth so if i'm running a project i will get all of you in you will buy the project's tokens you will governance the project and when the project makes money everybody will make money so one project can have millions and millions of shareholders within one project it's distributed and authorities, dependencies, dependency, dependencies turn into independent individual empowerment, meaning that you don't need the protection of a third party for your assets, for your decisions, for your opinions or whatever. You make your own choices with decentralization. And just to close, did you know on average only 3.9% of the world population own at least one cryptocurrency? So what you just learned today, only 3.9% of the world knows is a statistic from the, from the wallet. Only 14% of Americans own cryptos right now. Early enough, right? More than 70% of Americans don't know what NFT is, right? Around 28.6 million wallets are trading NFTs as of 2021. That is only 0 0.335% of the world population owns an NFT. So if you buy an NFT, this is how early we are right now. With the information we gather today, this is how early we are and this is opportunity. Because when the iPhone came out, when the dot-com boom came out, only this, these, these were the percentage for the first couple of years. This was a percentage. And look at it now, 90%, 100%. So all these coins that you see, all these tokens, all these NFTs that you see, right? There are still 96% of the world that hasn't come to the market yet. And what happens when more people come and buy tokens, prices go up, right? So that's why I'm telling you, when you invest in something, when it spikes up and down, always know these numbers. This is what's happening right now. And eventually, this, the technology sounds good, right? It's a promising technology. It's one of the best technologies humans made. So eventually, people are going to get into it. So long-term investments work in cryptocurrency. And that's how Elon Musk says, to the moon. Ha, ah, Slido. And giveaway after. By the way, congratulations to all of you to survive this a long, long, given my watch died out, a long one out of two hours and 10 minutes session. And also people virtually, congratulations. 30 people, in, wow. Ooh. Move this. This is the last Slido, so please participate as many as you, of you as you can. The question is, what interests you the most in the crypto world from the knowledge that we just gathered right now? What interests you the most in the crypto world? There's a certain amount of things I can handle at one time. Zooming in is not one. Ooh, we've got a very diverse. So it looks like people are more interested in investing cryptos and coins and tokens. Cryptos, uh, NFTs, investing early stage crypto projects, IDOs, ICOs, look into yours. Early stage NFT projects, cool, that 48% will like that giveaway. 6% says nothing, why am I still here? <laughs> so, as the sponsor of this event, MetaRings, MetaRings.io, right? 
It's NFT jewelry rings for the metaverse and real life. So what we're doing is we're creating, we have a great artist, which was endorsed by Kendall Jenner, Naomi Campbell, and all these artists worked with, he worked with Dolce Gabbana. He's an excellent artist and his designs are amazing, right? So he's designing jewelry rings that is are made into NFTs. And what we're gonna do is first of all, you will own the rings in the meta metaverse, either AR or VR glasses, you will have the ring, NFT rings on your finger, your meta finger, right? So it will be augmented on your finger in the metaverse. And you can get proposed and get married with this <laughs> NFT. I'll tell you how. We're designing NFT rings, <laughs> proposal boxes. So this box has a physical ring in it, which the physical ring has a barcode connected to it. You go to your loved ones, <laughs> Literally, right? You open the box and it's the physical ring that is the equivalent of your NFT. And on the box, there's two buttons, yes, no. If you click yes from a digital wallet of yours goes to the digital wallet of your lover, just a ring. <laughs> and if you click no, the NFT is burnt forever. So you will lose the NFT. So it's a tricky excitement. And We're gonna have decoration boxes, which you take, you have physical rings as well which, with the barcode, which you can scan. You take your physical ring, you put it on the decorated box, and there's a display that shows your NFT on your shelf. So you own that NFT ring and it rotates. It's a lot of cool stuff that we're doing with this project. And the giveaway is the whitelist access for Meta Rings NFTs. All you need to do, just email me the code SG hashtag 12 or DM me on Instagram, SG hashtag 12 on that account that you see over there. And in several days, I will, you know, contact you. I will email you. I will send you DM of how to get into our meta, our whitelist. And there's not that many whitelist spots. We, we, with these rings, we're doing 3,333 NFT rings. And I think the whitelist is around 1,000. No, less maybe 900 people whitelist. Yes.